Our subject is the evaluation of the systolic function of the right ventricle. It is somewhat difficult to assess. It has a shape that is not classifiable in any way within a Euclidean geometry and therefore we cannot obtain its volume by a simple equation. We know that there is three direction of contractile forces in the right ventricle. One is into the right cavity, the other by a decreasing distance between its base or the annulus of the tricuspid valve toward its tip when contracting. This longitudinal contraction between the base and the tip is the primary form of right ventricular ejection. About 40% of the right ventricular systolic function is due to this longitudinal displacement. There is also a particular influence of left ventricular contraction, mainly of the interventricular septum that pulls segments of the right ventricular wall. How can we analyze this contractile right ventricle function? I believe that one of the best forms that exists is the qualitative, subjective aspect. I am always running away from numbers and equations. For example, there is mild right ventricular dysfunction with right ventricular cavity increase. In reality, a small dilatation of the four cavities. Note that atrioventricular annulus is approximately like the left. Usually it, it is two-thirds of the left. Here, in this case, there is no doubt that there is a severe significant right ventricular systolic dysfunction. All walls have diminished contraction. What we notice here is that even in a longitudinal section, we can perceive this contractile problem. In a case of acute pulmonary embolism, we saw that the right ventricular wall here in this region of the right ventricular outflow tract shows poor contraction. It moves but does not contract. In this patient with a critical systolic right ventricular overload, showing the characteristic flattening of the interventricular sept, we also quickly perceive that these right ventricular walls are not thickening normally. There is no active contraction in these walls. Therefore, there is a ventricular dysfunction. In fact, we can qualitatively analyze even localized problems, as seen in the right ventricular tip. It practically does not contract. The other walls are contracting relatively well, but the right ventricle point is not contracting. It was a case of arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia. Although the good contractions of the basal regions, there is a global right ventricular dysfunction, probably mild to moderate. We can also go to numerical values. Perhaps the main measure is the fraction of systolic area of the right ventricle can be obtained automatically by specific software or by manual planimetry by tracing the endocardium of the anterior wall and the interventricular septum. Note that the intense trabeculations in the right ventricular cavity impair the edge detection software for endocardial identification. The right ventricular cavity is underestimated by automatic edge detection. We see here a fractional systolic area of 27%. Note that this measure is not an ejection fraction, but a reduction of an area. The normal is above 35%. Another interesting mode, which I tend to use under certain conditions, is the spectral tissue Doppler here of the tricuspid annulus. The problem is that it is not very sensitive. The normal is over 12 cm per second. It is nothing more than the demonstration of the longitudinal velocity of the decrease of the right ventricular cavity. As we have seen, much of the right ventricular contraction is due to the cavitary reduction in this direction. Then we measured this velocity toward the apex 
at which the tricuspid annulus moves. In this patient, we have 9 cm per second and there is a ventricular dysfunction. We must be careful since the velocity S' prime also decreases when there is a pulmonary arterial hypertension. It is very sensitive to afterload. Here we have 6 cm per second, therefore quite abnormal. Do not forget that S' prime is not the first highest velocity seen here. This is the peak velocity of isovolumetric contraction. It does not correspond to the ejection phase. It is easy to recognize that is not the S' prime because it is composed of two waves, one positive and one negative. S' prime is the one that follows the negative wave. The other way to analyze this region is, is by measuring the tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion, the so-called TAPSE, T-A-P-S-E. It is the displacement of the tricuspid annulus that we have just measured the S' prime velocity. It is widely used. We measure with one-dimensional echo the plane of the annulus with the cursor in a position like that performed for tissue Doppler. This displacement will be abnormal if it is less than 17 millimeters. Usually it's much more higher. Its sensitivity is reasonable, but it is abnormal when the qualitative evaluation of right ventricular contractility already indicates apparent dysfunction. It's never a first and only indicator of right ventricular dysfunction. It is also very dependent on pulmonary systolic pressure. Another interesting way to analyze is by a spectral Doppler of the suprahepatic vein. It shows a systolic wave X and a diastolic Y wave. In children, the X is less than Y. However, in adult life, even in the young, the X is higher than Y. What produces a big X wave? The closed tricuspid valve and the valve annulus, when pulled toward the tip, produce a piston-like effect by drawing the blood into the right atrium and uh, with it the flow in the suprahepatic vein descends toward the inferior vena cava and right atrium. With decreased right ventricular systolic function, this piston effect will diminish. As seen in this case, the X is well reduced, smaller than Y, and almost non-existent. An important fact is that it may not have a tricuspid regurgitation in this evaluation, since this regurgitation is the most common cause of X wave reduction or even its inversion, becoming positive. When there is at least moderate tricuspid regurgitation, although there is the piston effect of the atrial floor that pulls to the right ventricular tip, the regurgitation increases right atrial pressure, which decreases the blood entry to the right atrium and therefore a smaller X wave.